Hello, I'm Rainer Grüninger, Application Engineer at Kübler, and today I will show you how to implement a Profisafe encoder in TIA Portal. In this video, I will show you how to commission our Sendix S58 Profisafe encoder in TIA Portal. You will learn how to depassivate our encoder in order to get position values. We will use safe and non-safe telegrams for our data exchange in order to receive safe and non-safe position values all at the same time. First, let's have a look on our setup. Our setup consists of a Siemens PLC S71518F, a managed IRT switch and the S58 Profisafe encoder. To configure our encoder, we use TIA Portal. Make sure all connections are set up correctly and the port number of the encoder later in the project refers to the actual connected Ethernet port. To implement and commission the encoder, two things are essential. One, the GSDML file of the device. Two, the Kubler TCI tool, which handles the CRC calculation. Both can be found on the respected Kubler webpage for the Profi Safe device. Download the TCI tool and install it according to the instructions on the screen. Once the tool is installed, it can be utilized through TIA Portal. Next, download the GSDML file and place it in your current TIA project folder. In TIA, go to Manage Device Description Files and install the actual S58 ProfiSafe GSDML file. Once installed, you can add the encoder to your Profinet network. Before we start to commission our encoder, please make sure your F-host is set up correctly. In this tutorial, we focus only on the F-device, which is our Sendix S58 Profisafe encoder. To begin, place the encoder from the hardware catalog in your network. Search for S58X8FS3 and drag and drop the device in your network. Connect the encoder to the relevant ports of your network topology. Assign the encoder to the correct subnet of your PLC network. As a first step, we have to make sure to set up an encoder device name, which includes the F destination address at the end of the name. In this example, we use the address 100. Once the device name is set, it has to be assigned to the device. Click on your device and choose Assign Device Name. The same address has to be applied to the F parameters within the safe slot of the device. For this, we go to the device view of the encoder. You will see that the Sendix S58 has predefined submodules and uses the standard Telegram 81 for non-safe values and the standard Telegram 36 for safe value transmission. If you want to use other submodules, delete the existing submodule and choose your preferred module from the catalog. Then drag and drop it to the subslots of the encoder. You can choose between the most common standard telegrams for safe and non-safe values. These include standard telegram 36, 37, 81, 82, 83, 84, 86, 88. 
All telegrams differ in their structure, included processed data and length. In this example, we use the default submodules for further configuration. Let's have a look on how to set up the basic parameters of the encoder. Besides changing the F destination address, we don't need to change any parameters if we quickly want to check if the encoder is working. If we want to use custom parameters, however, we now have to parameterize the required modules. But before we change the I parameters of the encoder, first let's assign the F destination address in the F parameters. Go to Standard Telegram 36 and choose the ProfiSafe parameter group. Here, you can set up the F destination address. Once again, we type in 100. All other F parameter remain unchanged. Next, we change the basic encoder parameters. Go to the safe slot of the encoder modules and type in the preferred MUR and TMR values. Under Properties, select the subslot parameters and type in the values MUR equals 15-bit and TMR equals 12-bit. In this tutorial, we will use the maximum scaling for a 27-bit encoder with a safe position information. We leave the counting direction on clockwise and the scaling function on. Repeat the same procedure for the non-safe subslot with Telegram 81. In this tutorial, however, we keep the default parameters. Now that we have made some changes on the safety parameters of the encoder, we need to calculate a new CRC so that the encoder will accept the new configuration. Any parameter changes of F parameter or I parameter result in a new CRC. This new CRC has to be put in under F parameters. To calculate the CRC, the Kubler TCI is needed. To execute the TCI, right-click on the encoder symbol and choose Start TCI. The tool window pops up and the calculated CRC is shown. Click on Copy. Paste the CRC in TIA under F parameters in the respected box. Before the start of operation, we need to create some basic variables for which we create a tag table. In this tag table, we create a safety variable for position, speed and the user acknowledge to depassivate the encoder. Be sure to use the correct input addresses from the respective submodule. Don't forget to create variables for the non-safe process data. Here we created variables for handling the cyclic as well as the acyclic data. As a safety device, the encoder is initially passivated and won't send any data unless the status is changed. For this reason, we have to create a function block that handles the user acknowledgement. Go to the program block main safety RTG1 and place an AND as well as an equals function in the network. The input for the AND function is the variable user ACK and the reference variable for the equals function is the variable ACK ray which can be found under Telegram 36. For this tutorial, we have created a predefined watch table in which we can see all variables needed for the user acknowledgement, the safety data and the standard data. The configuration is now valid and can be sent to the PLC. Click the Download to PLC button and follow the instructions.
If everything went successfully, we can go online to start the observation. If the encoder is being commissioned for the first time, the initial status of it will be passivated. This means that the communication is working, but there is no process data sent from the device to the PLC. To initiate the normal operating status, we first have to depassivate the encoder. Go to the ACK RAY tag, put it on 1 and send the command. The process data of the encoder will now be sent to the PLC. A similar task has to be performed for the non-safe values. Notice how the safety position value is transmitted when the shaft of the encoder is rotated while G1 XIST1 is not transmitted. To receive the process data from standard Telegram 81, we have to inactivate the parking sensor. To switch off the parking sensor, bit 14 of the control word of Telegram 81, G1 STW, needs to be set to zero. Also, bit 10 of the encoder control word, STW2 ENC, needs to be set to one. This enables the control by PLC. Once the encoder is properly set up, process data will be sent to the PLC. Our Sendix S58 is equipped with an integrated web server. This means that you can check the firmware version and update the firmware easily by browsing for the dedicated IP address of the device. Make sure to use the correct IP address and type it into your browser. Next, click Browse and select the previously downloaded Kubler firmware file. To start the firmware update, click on Upload. Make sure to disengage any existing Profinet connection concerning the encoder. Otherwise, the upload will fail. In case of a failure, an error message is provided. For updating the encoder, there must not be an active Profinet communication. This means the encoder has to be deactivated completely or it has to be connected directly to the I.O. supervisor, in this case, the PC system. To deactivate the encoder within the existing network, use the standard function block DACT. DP. With this block, we can trigger the deactivation. Once the deactivation was executed, the status symbol of the encoder will appear grey. Now we can open the web server of the device and choose the firmware file to upload. Next, click on Upload and wait until the upload has been finished. If everything works properly, the actual status of the firmware update is shown in the browser window. That's how easy the encoder can be updated. Now you know exactly how to commission the Sendix S58 ProfiSafe encoder. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again in the next tutorial. Your Rainer Grüninger.